So if I take a really small needle, right, that's made of steel, and if I placed it on water, did you know that even though steel is denser than water, this needle will not sink. It will actually stay on the surface. Now, why is that? Now, the answer is a very curious phenomenon that we call surface tension. This occurs because the, fo the forces that the balls in the bulk of the fluid feel are very different from the forces that the balls at the surface feel. To understand that, let's, let's draw the forces that these balls feel. So let's take a ball in the bulk of the fluid. Now, the attractive forces are from all directions, right? Okay? But if you take a ball that's on the surface and you draw the forces, you find that the forces that are on top, that are coming from on top, are not there because there is nothing on top, right? So only the forces that are from the sides and below are present. So this basically leads uh, the surface to behave like a stretched membrane, you know, or a stretched sheet of rubber. And this is why when I place a nail of small overall mass, right, or small overall weight, if I place it on top of the surface, the tension, right, that this surface has is strong enough to keep it up and prevent it from going down. Now, this actually can even be a blade, it need not be a needle, it can be anything of small mass, right? a, a blade or a, any small object, when placed like that, the surface tension can keep it up. But when I push it down like this, right? when I push the small object and break the surface tension, then all everything else that I said will hold true, it will start sinking and it will go down. Now, what about the magnitude of this surface tension or this force because of surface tension? we find that the magnitude of this tension is proportional to the length of the surface in contact. So, to understand that, let's first consider a liquid surface like this. And let's say I take a line of fluid like this. Okay? Now, what would be the forces acting on this line of fluid? Now, obviously, the, this portion of fluid on this side will pull it in this direction right, because of some attractive force. And similarly, another portion of liquid on this side will pull it in this direction, right? And both the forces will be of the same magnitude because that line of fluid is at rest. So what we find is that if we take, if we consider one, one of these forces, let's say this force F, and divide it by this length L, right? It's constant for a particular fluid. We, let's say that constant, we call it S. So F by L equals S, and this constant is it is constant for a particular fluid at a particular temperature. Now, another way of saying is that this force is directly proportional to this length, right? And if I replace that constant, replace that proportionality with a constant of proportionality, I'll get F is equal to S into L, right? And again, that constant is constant for a particular fluid at a particular temperature. Now, that constant is called the surface tension of this fluid. That constant S. Now, one thing to note here is that this phenomenon of you know, stretching of the fluid, making it, I mean, the fact that the fluid becomes something like a stretched membrane is also called surface tension. And this quantity F by L is also called surface tension. So one more important point is that the phenomenon of sur surface tension occurs only in liquids, not in gases. Even though I mentioned fluids, it does not occur in gases. Mainly because you can have a free surface for a liquid, but it's almost impossible to have a free surface for gas. Right? For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.